Hello everybody, I'm Ranjita from Center for Quantum Technologies, National University, Singapore. First of all, I would like to thank the DM of 2020 organizer for giving me an opportunity to present our, our work. Uh, our work. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the frequency reference for nano satellite quantum technology mission. This project was executed in collaborations with the Humboldt University in Berlin and the National University of Singapore. Uh, in this project, we are planning to develop a standalone unit of frequency reference based on the Doppler free saturation absorption spectroscopy of the Rubidium D2 line. Today, uh, here I will start my presentations by giving you a brief overview and the motivations why we wanted to pursue this kind of research and the feasibility in executing uh, this kind of project. And then we'll follow up with the development, recent development, what we are doing in the spectroscopy setup and the optical, uh, optical as well as in electronics control also. After that, I will uh, finish my talk by giving you the near future outlook uh, of our project. The main motivations of doing this kind of research is to explore the advantages of the quantum tech science and technology in space in diverse applications like communications, computations, sensing and navigations, as well as in the studies of the fundamental physics. Uh, there are some pro pro projects and proposals uh, regarding the studies of the science and technology in space using the conventional satellite, which are yet to be realized because of the associated high cost in launching this kind of satellite. And, uh, the developmental risks in terms of increasing the efficiency and the reliability of the system as which in turn increase the lead time of the project delivery and only a very few limited scientific communities is associated in this kind of project because of huge sum of the money required in starting this project so with the recent development of the nano satellite which based on the cubesat technology uh, we can accelerate the quantum space missions and explorations uh, by increasing the components and the subsystem in the orbit, which is based on a unit of CubeSat. The right side figure shows the one unit and the two unit of CubeSat, which are stacked together. One unit of CubeSat can be worked as a fully functional unit, uh, which here has a dimension of so 10 cm cube and a weight of around a kg. With this slide, I want to convince the, the scientific community that the CubeSat is a good choice of doing the space quantum science and technology. With the advancement of the miniaturization technologies and the digestions of the components, I would, the CubeSat is a good choice of doing uh, the scientific research because now we have the ability to miniaturize and uh, compactness of the system. In order to optimize the performance of the science package in the CubeSat, the most important criteria is to evaluate the technology readiness level. So uh, in, for, for the different components of the um, science package, like uh, the physics package and the communications package, we, we, using this, we are going to communicate uh, uh, the ground with the um, space and also transferring of data from the space. So uh, recently, as you can see in the in these figures, in the pictures photograph, the successful deployment of the spooky satellite uh, in 2019, which carries a polarization entangle uh, QKD sort, and uh, successfully working since 2019 is a good example of our technology and expertise in handling this kind of project. And also there is a project called CASPA for UK, which are going to explore the quantum gravity sensing in, uh, in the, using the CubeSat technology. Uh, so using all this expertise and our experience, we are going to build a frequency reference sort of based on the rubidium absorption spectroscopy, the blood free absorption spectroscopy, uh, so the present status of our frequency reference source is in the testing and the validating of the different experimental subsystem. Uh, so next I will present you uh, the present status or the development on our projects. 
So the laser spectroscopy system. So what we want is we want to develop a compact, robust uh, laser which will be stand alone uh, absolute frequency reference. So this laser system will be based on the Doppler free laser spectroscopy of the rubidium vapor, rubidium vapor cell. And we are going to lock uh, the laser using the frequency modulation spectroscopy. As you can see on the right side pictures, uh, the CAT image of the uh, our spectroscopy setup, which is uh, which we are uh, presently developing at the Humboldt University. And the frequency target frequency stability once we lock the laser uh, using the frequency modulation is of the order of 10 power minus 14 per day and we have tried out uh, this in our lab using the monolithic uh, distributed feedback laser and all these electro optical components and the control of the spectroscopy optics uh, of the spectroscopy setup uh, will be combined in in a box of 70 into 26 into 19 millimeter as you can see in these figures it's in a compact a small robust single frequency sources uh, apart from developing the laser spectroscopy system there are other challenges in this project including the miniaturizations of the supporting equipment and the control electronics we are developing and control electronic system which can be uh, linked using a digital control unit in a space linkable platform which we plan to use this to control and the switching of the laser beam as well as the frequency shift intensity control and the thermal stabilizations of the whole unit so uh, to give you an example of our um, electronics control we are developing the laser current controller uh, the example the pictures is a current controller which has a dimension of 80 by 80 into 30 millimeter 30 millimeters so uh, what our plan is to put all this control electronics together with the developed laser spectroscopy system in a unit of cubesat so with this to uh, rigorous and the thorough validation process of all our developed components uh, before um, sending into the space. So, uh, for example, for lasers, we have to do all the long and the short term stability studies and the uh, influence of external perturbations in its frequency uh, locking and also any thermal and the mechanical uh, effect in orbit in our laser system as well as in the electronic system also this quantification of the process will be going on in some round uh, in the ground development and also testing to make a final product which can be launched in the cubesat cube set satellite satellite for uh, further studies in this slide what i want to present you is our immediate future outlook and the plan uh, with our development of with our developed laser uh, spectroscopy system and the control electronics our uh, next plan is to demonstrate a magneto optical trap using the miniaturized vacuum components and the control electronics so we have already demonstrated that we can use one laser for both the cooling and the repumping in the, using the pulse switching uh, technique so the details about this laser system can be found in the attached reference in this slide and then we are going to make a miniaturized uh, ultra high vacuum chamber using the commercial components which are available uh, uh, of the cells and not no, we are not going to use customized components which will delay our development and demonstration of this physics and uh, we are going to use our con control electronics which are space linkable to do all this kind of them all these demonstrations uh, with this i came to the end of my presentations so i would like to summarize that uh, today i have shown and um, our development and the progress and the development towards the realizations of a cubesat frequency reference source based on the Doppler free absorption spectroscopy of the rubidium vapor cell.
so uh, I come to the end of my talk with this. I would like to thank you all in the team of 2020 and also my co-workers. Uh, so uh, first of all, I would like to thank the two PI in this project, Alex Link and Dr. Marcus Kuji for allowing me to be part of this project. And uh, right now we are, I work, I'm working with um, PhD student Simon and master students around uh, together in this project. And these are the others people who are working in this project earlier. So if you have any clarifications or doubt uh, or any questions regarding our project development or any information, please write to me uh, at the CQT RCS um, at the red nus.edu.sc. I will be happy to answer you and uh, answer all your queries and questions and I will try to uh, answer everything whatever you ask to me. Thank you all.